it's not hard to look at look at yourself, whoever you are, and think, oh, I'm turning into my mom, or I'm turning into my dad, or I'm I'm I'm, I'm mirroring behaviours of my parents. But that's just sort of part of the puzzle. So we 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 could every week just go, well, that's because his mom was like this, or that's because her dad was like that. Um, it is it is way too simple because at some stage you become responsible for your own actions. It is a universal truth that a man in possession of a very decent acting career, a back catalogue in the world of rap, where you'd know him as Doc Brown, and a collaboration with Ricky Gervais in comedy screenwriting must be in need of a podcast. And that's exactly what's happened to Ben Bailey-Smith. His podcast is called Shrink the Box and he presents it with the psychotherapist Sasha Bates. It's a neat concept whereby they take the big characters of recent TV drama and examine their psychological lives. Oh, my little from The Wire, Tony from The Sopranos, Walter White from Breaking Bad. And I think the next episode is Fleabag's Fleabag. Hello there, Ben. Hello, how's uh, it going? Yeah, it's going very well. How are you? I'm very well. I'm yeah. All right. Uh, do you join us from a parked car? <laughs> I, I, as you can see, I, my hands are completely free. Yeah, okay. I'm parked. Okay. Um, on the move. Right. I won't ask where you're going to, and you know, and obviously. I hope you've paid the appropriate parking. Right, uh, you're very open at the beginning of your podcasts about your own journey through therapy. Uh, how long has that journey been and how has it helped you? Yeah, it's been on and off. I think the first time I tried it was 2014 and I, it didn't, didn't sit well with me, but I think it was just more the therapist. I just thought, oh my gosh, you are useless even, <laughs> even though i have no experience of it i just i just knew that it, it wasn't working out the vibe wasn't there and then that sort of put me off it but then i tried it again in 2017 and sort of just opened myself up a little bit more and uh you know stopped thinking it sounds a strange thing to say so so self-consciously but i think you do have to sort of let go a little bit of that idea that you're meeting just just another human being you know and you have to show off or um be something you're not you know it's kind of the exact opposite <laughs> and if you hadn't had some decent therapy and I, obviously i hope the second therapist was much better than the first uh, then would you have been as interested in exploring this kind of thing about drama i i'm not sure is this the is the true answer because I've always been interested in therapy because my mom was a therapist, family therapist. Um, so I was fascinated in in how it might turn people's lives around for the better. And, and myself, I was a, a youth worker working with a lot of kids on the margins of society and, and seeing how, um, you know, negative environments, it may either in the home or outside the home or or economic situations or, or uh racial backgrounds or, or, or sexuality amongst young people might affect them negatively and, and, and have no one to talk to about it. So I've always had some interest. So I, I wouldn't I wouldn't say if if I'd never had therapy and the idea was put in front of me, I, I would I would just uh, poo poo it immediately. I think it's a fascinating thing. I, on the surface, shrink the box seems like just a wild flight of fancy. You just think, well, what's the point? The person, the character is not real. But the psychoanalysis that Sasha does is real and and everything that she refers to is real, be it biological or, 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 or purely um, uh, 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 purely from a, a, a psychotherapeutic point of view. Mm. Um, and some of the concepts that she comes well, I say some of the concepts, all of the concepts she comes up with are relevant to being a human being, regardless of the super villain or or, um, you know, tricky character like Fleabag that, that that we're looking at. There are so many things that when I hear her in full flow, I think, oh, yeah, that's like this or like that in, in, in IRL, as, 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 as the kids say, you know. Yeah. And um, uh, I think that's why the show really works, alongside the fact that we're talking about iconic television programs that hopefully most people have seen. Yeah. Uh, you have these great chats, I think in particular about modern masculinity actually, and certainly in some of the characters that you've chosen, Tony in The Sopranos and Walter White in particular. And I wonder when we have these incredibly brilliant nuanced characters everywhere that actually there is a real problem at the moment uh, with thuggish, aggressive, toxic masculinity. 
It's a big question of our times for you there, Ben, and I hope you're capable of answering it. <laughs> um, so you mean in the real world? Yes. We're watching these very, yeah. very clever characters, yes, aren't yes. we, that have been really yeah, thought absolutely. about and really tell us something about the real male mm -hmm. brain, but that really doesn't seem yeah, to compute so. to this extraordinary rise of very linear, I'd say rather stupid, misogyny. Yeah, and I think that's because there's so many other things that are much more readily available and much more quicker to consume. It's, it's only going to take you 30 seconds to listen to what idiocy someone like Andrew Tate might have to say on one of his pointless, boneheaded YouTube videos, you know? But it's going to take you uh, weeks, months, perhaps years to, com to complete uh, a series where a show comes out every week or, like, say something like Succession, which really digs into you know uh the the idea of jealousy within the family structure the the sort of cain and abel uh, uh emotions that can rise within uh what from the outside might look like a loving family interesting complicated com concepts like that might take you four years to watch uh and if you are not that way inclined then it's probably much easier to to click online and watch 30 seconds of dross from an idiot mm. Um, I listened to the uh, Tony from The Sopranos episode of Shrink the Box, Ben, and um, guess what? It was all his mother's fault. I mean, that that's the gist of it, isn't it? Or is it more complicated than that? Yeah, I think it's, I think it's way more complicated than that. I, I think what we're really looking at, because we could do that every week, because, you know, we both have a reverence for, for Freudian psychology, um, uh, and it's not hard to look at look at yourself whoever you are and think oh i'm turning into my mom or i'm turning into my dad or i'm i'm i'm, I'm mirroring behaviors of my parents but that's just sort of part of the puzzle so we 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 could every week just go well that's because his mom was like this or that's because her dad was like that um it is it is way too simple because at some stage you become responsible for your own actions yeah. and uh, and you, you you are a grown adult. The issue, the reason that we're fascinated in parents and family structure, is because there are there are learned behaviours that are mixed with a lot of the time the building of a void, something missing. So you could have them two most loving parents to ever walk the earth. But if you as a child perceive that maybe one of them preferred your sister or your brother better than you, or you perceive that there was a lack of love or a lack of something that you required as a very small child, trying to fill that void um, as you grow can become problematic. You know, you can, you can develop behaviors that, uh, you know, are actually detrimental that harm you but they're behaviors that you b taught yourself to believe were part of your inner security part of a way of making you feel good to replace that thing that you wanted to make you feel good back when you were a young innocent that's why we constantly look at the parents but it's not the parents fault uh quotes unquote, because every parent oh, i like to think every most parents let's say mm. uh myself included <laughs> We're trying to do the best that we can, you know, mm -hmm. and it take it can take a lifetime for you to turn around and go, actually, I mean, for me, I think it was definitely having children. You know, I had children and I was like, oh, my God, this is really bloody hard. <laughs> this is really hard. And it makes you look back at your parents and go, wow, you know what? You did the best you could with the tools that you had, you know, so that's sort of that's our starting point. Let's let's imagine that the parents did the best they could with the tools that they had. And then let's look at what built within this person, within this character, to make them behave the way that they behave. Yeah, so you can break the cycle of bad parents, Absolutely. can't you? You really can. Absolutely. And, and I, but actually, those people who do, I'm, I'm never really sure that they get the credit they deserve. No, it's, it's, it's almost a silent, private act, and there's no award for it. There's no, you know, there's no big celebration. Even your kids won't thank you, No. you know? <laughs> Um, so the, 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 the thanks you get and the reward you get sort of comes through those beautiful moments in your life where, you know, you realize, oh, my kids are all grown up, but they haven't forgotten about me. You know, they, they, they check in with me. They, 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 they pop up at the door. We have wonderful get togethers, you know, and um, it's those moments where I think if you are able to take stock, you can go, oh, my gosh, you know. We didn't do too bad over here. <laughs> we did all right.
Now, Ben, you've got, you've got somebody with you in the car who definitely needs That's a drink of water. Okay, so, so the poor re- thing. The reason, okay. I'm the so reason sorry. I'm in a car... Yeah. The reason I'm in a car is my 14-year-old is incredibly ill. And, oh. uh, so I've, I've had her off school today and I've just driven her to the doctors to get some antibiotics. Yes. OK, do you um, know what, Ben? Now you've told us that, it would be the worst thing in the world if we carried on answering you questions. Will you send our very best to your daughter? Apologise for the fact that well, Dad had to pull over and talk to... Two small women from Times Radio about his podcast, <laughs> but we've enjoyed every moment and uh, get Excellent. the antibiotics and get her home. <laughs> oh, I, that's exactly what I'm going to do. Thanks okay, you, okay, that. very nice to talk to you, Ben. <laughs> very nice to talk and to you. you. Okay, that's Ben Bailey Smith, and his podcast is called Shrink the Box. It is. That, the coughing was getting more persistent. <laughs> it was. We just couldn't ignore it anymore. Poor thing. Um, there's nothing worse than one of those coughs you can't shake. Yeah, and especially if you're trying, because you just know that he said, look, don't worry, I won't be too long. You know, you just sit there. If, if you're told to sit there and be quiet and you've got a cough. But he's hit the jackpot, hasn't he? Getting a doctor's appointment. Charles would be a fine thing, Fiona. <laughs> he's got a double whammy if he's got the antibiotics as, as well. well. But yeah, let's not joke about it. No, I hope his daughter's all right. I'm sure she'll be all right. Yeah. yeah. That was Ben Bailey-Smith. The podcast is very interesting.